Welcome to Simply Stylish DIY, where we take ordinary to extraordinary. Hey y'all! Welcome back to Simply Stylish DIY. Today, we will be crafting three unique Mother's Day gifts that will make all the special women in your life feel loved. These will make the perfect presents made by you to give to mothers, grandmothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, friends, and the list goes on. You might love these so much that you make one for yourself too. Without further ado, let's get to crafting. DIY number one, B coasters, four unique ways. For this DIY, you'll need a four pack of wood coasters, also a stamp with a stamp pad, a couple of different colors of water-based acrylic paint, Mod Podge, a couple of different kinds of napkins, a stencil, and scissors. We're going to make four different designs in these coasters. I'm going to show you four different techniques that you can use. That way you can choose the one you like best. I picked up this set of uh, four square coasters at Joanne Fabrics. You can get these any craft store. They come in uh, square or round. You could also use something from Dollar Tree and we're going to put a seal on those so it doesn't matter as long as they're wood. I chose bees as my theme for these four coasters. So I'm going to use this uh, bee napkin that I used in a previous DIY. So I'm going to measure it up here and choose the section of the napkin that has the most bees on that. Once I choose the part I'm going to use, I'm going to cut that out a little bit larger than what I need. Once you have that uh, cut out a little bit larger, you're going to take it and rip off the edges so it will fit on the front of your coaster. Just make them um, haphazardly ripped and so it'll fit there in the center. These napkins that I bought were triple ply, so make sure when you do this that you just pull off the top layer. Um, you only want that one little section to use for your DIY. After I pull that apart, I'm going to put a nice coat of Mod Podge. I'm using gloss. Any uh, Mod Podge will work for this. Just make sure that you put a nice coat on what you're going to cover up. And then take that little sheet. It's very thin at this point. And I'm just going to use my finger and make sure it's pressed down into the Mod Podge. I have a little excess at the top. I'm just going to pull that off because it's going to seal and uh, you could sand it if you wanted to. If you have anything that hangs over once it's dry. After you take your finger and rub out as many of the creases as you can. I left a few in because I like the way it looked. It kind of looked crinkled and crackled. Um, but you can rub them out uh, solid if you want to. We're going to take some more Mod Podge and go over the top with a nice good coat so you can seal in the napkin design. If you have any little edges here like I did, just put some Mod Podge underneath that. You can take your brush and raise it up a little bit to make sure that you have good coverage and then just press it back down and go around the uh, top of the edges to make sure that it's all sealed good. While the first one is drying, we're going to do something else with the second one. We're just going to go uh, along with the same technique for this one. I have these napkins that I picked up um, at Joanna also. So I'm going to take one of these out and use that little middle design. I want it to uh, fit to get in uh, local honey and the little words there at the bottom. So I'm going to try just to position it while it's still intact. Once I get it lined up, I'm just going to kind of crease that and then cut out the design. I'm just going to take my scissors and cut along those creases so I can get the little square to fit. Once I cut out the bigger square, I'm going to take it, lay it over my coaster and do the same thing and uh, crease so I can make sure that I get the words at the bottom and the top positioned on the top of it. This set of napkins is only a uh, two ply, so I'm going to take off that top sheet and just use that part and discard the bottom. Um, we're going to take that and this time we're not going to tear the edges. We're just going to take that little square that we cut out with the creases and Mod Podge it on like we did the first one. And just so you have uh, clean edges on this one and not the tear. Make sure you put a nice coat of Mod Podge on the uh, front of the coaster. Once you have that, lay your little napkin piece down, take your fingers, press out 
the uh, creases and wrinkles. If you accidentally tear it, just take your finger and mash it down and you'll get um, that to cover up. Like I said, I you like to leave some creases in just to give it some texture. Choice is totally up to you. You can use any kind of napkins that you want for this project. Uh, if you're going to give it as a gift, pick something that uh, the recipient loves and do it uh, for them as a personalized coaster set. I'm going to set that one aside so the Mod Podge will dry really good. I usually stick mine under a ceiling fan and flip it on. That way it can dry faster. Now we're going to start the next one. I'm going to use a little stamp pad for this. I picked this little um, stamper up at a craft store that has bees on it. I thought this would be a really cute idea. So I'm just going to take it, dab it in my stamp pad, and then I'm going to put it on the unfinished wood of the coaster and then we're going to stain it a little bit with some faux stain but i'm just going to fill in all the little holes with another stamp i'm not going to cross over them but i'm going to uh, fill it up in all the little bare spaces next i'm going to take this yellow acrylic paint it's water-based and i'm going to just put a little dab here in the middle of the uh, fourth coaster and uh, take my sponge brush and just put a nice coat on it until uh, I like the color. Once that dried, uh, I'm going to take this little bee. It's a little pick actually for like flower arrangements. I got these at Joanne Fabrics too when they were on sale. So I'm going to um, use it as a stencil. This way I can take off that uh, little piece of wire at the bottom. I unclipped it with my um, wire cutters and then I can use it uh, and go over it with my black acrylic paint. I'm going to position that little stencil in the center of my uh, coaster and just holding it right now with my hand, I'm going to take these little stampers that I got. I'm going to stamp Be Kind, B-E-E -E at the top and Kind at the bottom. I just thought that would give it a little different pop. Uh, I do not want to use my acrylic paint around the stencil yet because I wanted to make sure that everything was positioned correctly before I did that. I just lightly stenciled the uh, wording because I'm going to distress these coasters uh, at the end altogether. so I just wanted it to be kind of a muted look. And after that I went ahead and used that little B stamper that we used on the third coaster just to tie everything in. I thought it would be cute just to stamp the corners uh, while I'm holding that stencil in place, I just want to make sure I had everything lined up correctly. Next, I'm going to take some black chalk paint and this little teeny tiny sponge brush. I'm going to dip it into the paint and go around the edges of the stencil and also in the center so I can get the little bee stripes. While that one dries, I'm going to go back to the uh, little bee stencil that we uh, stamped. I'm going to take some brown acrylic paint and I'm going to water it down with some clean water. That way it'll make like a faux stain. I'm going to be using this on the stencils now so I can tie in all the colors. So I'm going to make a little bit extra so I can get all those done at the same time. So I'm just going to take that, mix it up, take a sponge brush, make sure you don't have any little clumps left, water it down to the right consistency like um, just no uh, thickness to it and then we're going to take that sponge brush go around the edges of your uh, coasters i also painted the backs too just so they all look completely finished i'm going to take it and paint over that don't worry it's not covering it all up then we're going to take a rag or a paper towel dab off the excess and once it dries you'll be able to see that uh, stamped look i just wanted everything to kind of look um, muted and antique looking I'm going to use the same faux stain that I mixed up for the uh, little stamp one. I'm going to take it and go around the edges of the napkin one once it is dry. I'm also going to take it around the top edge and then I'm going to take that brush. I know I've already Mod Podge that on and it is dried, but this way it'll pick up if there's any spaces in between and it'll give it that distressed antique look that I'm going for. Once I have that on there, I'm going to take my cloth and wipe that off. And you can see here on the edges that it picked up a little bit of that stain and it just looks like it all blends nice together. I'm going to do the same thing on the um, other napkin one that we did in the square and not the tears. I'm going to 
go around the edges, paint the back, and do the same thing on the top, just wiping away all the excess that you have left. That way um, it takes off of the uh, thickness and just leaves you a nice wood finish underneath. I just wanted to make sure that I did this on this one too in case uh, it got some of the edges just like it did here and you can see there in the corner. I think that just makes it look really cute uh, and pretty. Next I'm going to take this um, distressor. I'm going to use the black in it this time and I'm going to go around all four sides of uh, all four coasters just to tie them in and make them uh, match. Just take your coarse bristle brush and go around all the edges with your uh, distressor. I thought this just tied everything in and made all the um, coasters look like they belong in the set. That distressor uh, dries really quickly. Just set them aside until it's uh, dry. Next, we're going to take the uh, gloss mod podge and put a really good thick coat on the tops of all the coasters. I went ahead and sealed the edges too. That way, it wouldn't uh, peel up on the sides. This should uh, prevent uh, them from getting damaged if you set a uh, glass on them. It should make them pretty waterproof. If you're going to use them a lot, I would suggest to take them outside and um, spray them with a polyurethane. That way it would uh, seal in everything uh, for you so you don't have to worry about moisture or staining. Make sure that you uh, let them sit on a piece of wax paper or somewhere to dry thoroughly before you stack them together. After these dry completely, it would be really cute to stack them together, tie them with a piece of twine, and put a little uh, name card on them for a gift. Okay, here's your finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. I tried to show you different ways that you could make the uh, coasters. You can choose your favorite and do the uh, entire set that way, or um, divide it up and do each technique in a different uh, design. Choose the napkins that you like, and you could change these out seasonally and do a, a Christmas set, a fall set. These would be great gifts to give any time of year. DIY number two, handmade pink bead bracelet. For this DIY, you'll need some of your favorite beads from any craft store, also some eight millimeter stretch cord, scissors, and you'll also need, I'm going to show you how to uh, make a bead holder. You need the extra large popsicle sticks and a clothespin. We're going to start off this DIY by making a little bead holder. We're going to take these extra large popsicle sticks. I'm going to use three of those. And we're going to take one and put the, some hot glue on the edge. We're going to take that, lay it on the top of the first one, leave a little space there at the bottom. Then run uh, some hot glue on the main edge of the third one and put it on the bottom main edge of that. Kind of like let it tilt down. And then you have that crevice there in the center and that's where we're going to lay our beads to make our bracelets. This way when you lay on the table it keeps your beads from rolling off and you can actually design your bracelet on here and you can see what it's going to look like before you start to string it. I chose this strand of beads at Hobby Lobby when they were on clearance. Uh, the strand had these two beads I'm showing you now on the um, string too. I'm going to take these off and remove them, put them aside for later. The beads I'm going to keep to use the bracelet. I'm going to start the center off um, on the little bead board that we made. Uh, I'm going to put the largest one here in the center and then I'm going to work to the outsides. Therefore, um, the back of the bracelet or the uh, smaller beads will be on the back side on the main ends and then we'll position these to uh, get the design that we think is going to look pretty. Next time I'm just going to take the smaller beads and go to the outside edges and then I'm going to go in the center here and use the little clear beads. These are all glass beads um, that I chose. Uh, they got a little bit of weight to them. Therefore, I'm going to uh, go down gradually in size and that way I can stick these in between them and then 
each color can pop off of the clear ones in the middle. Okay, next we're going to take this 8 millimeter stretch cord, um, and the best way to do it is uh, to take a um, clothespin, pinch it open, and stick it on the end, wrap it around your wrist, uh, or however big you want to make your bracelet, and that way um, when you start stringing your beads, it won't come off of the other end, and once you have it strung and you like the... Um, design of your bracelet you can just unclip that and tie your knot since our clothespin is uh, holding the other end we're going to take the beads starting on one end uh, since we've already got our design laid out for the bracelet and go ahead and start stringing them go ahead and uh, string all the beads that you have laid out on your design and uh, once you get that finished we'll tie it off there are several different ways that you can tie a uh, bracelet off. We're going to use this method here, just tying a uh, knot uh, several times. Make sure that you don't um, tie it so tight that the uh, beads scrunch together. Just tie it so the beads come together um, at the ends. Make sure that you tie four or five different uh, little knots. Pull it taut after you tie your first couple uh, loops and that way it will um, be a small knot and then once you have that done take your scissors clip those ends and then slide your bead over top of that it should go in one of the holes very good and that way it hides your knot and your bracelet will be ready to gift or wear okay here's your finished product i hope you enjoyed this diy i know it's a little different than what we normally do uh, with all the crafts i thought this would give you um, a fun way to make something for uh, someone in your life that you love for mother's day also um, you can head down to your uh, local craft store grab your favorite beads and uh, make it your own unique creation stick around for our next uh, diy i think you're going to love this gift idea diy number three mama bird under glass decor for this fun DIY, you're going to need a small plate from Dollar Tree, also a glass bowl from Dollar Tree, some jute, a little bird, some eggs, a little nest, some ribbon, a glass candlestick holder, and some moss. Okay, I got this uh, glass candlestick holder from Dollar Tree. I also picked up this um, dessert size plate from Dollar Tree. We're going to take it and I'm going to hot glue that onto uh, the glass candlestick holder in the center. Um, I used hot glue and it held really well, but if you want to, um, to have more of a permanent bond, go ahead at this point and use the, uh, E6000 glue, uh, or any kind of super glue that you like the best, but the, uh, hot glue I thought would hold quicker and I could, uh, show the DIY faster. I'm just going to take the hot glue here and go around the uh, top edge of the uh, candlestick holder and then I'm going to take the plate and center it on the top and press that down and hold it. I got a really good seal and I moved it around. I picked it up from the plate and it did not move. I picked these little um, bird's nest up at Hobby Lobby when they were on clearance. Um, they were 49 cents for both of these. I thought these would be a really cute uh, idea to put under the cloche or this DIY. And uh, I think you're going to love how this turns out at the end. So I'm going to take this moss and cut off uh, a little chunk of that. I'm going to take those little pieces, lay on my table because I'm going to use those in just a minute. Stretch it out long ways. Um, kind of form it with your hands into like a rope. And then we're going to take that, wrap it around the nest just to give it some extra dimension. And then we're going to take our glass bowl to make sure that it's going to fit over that before we glue it onto the plate. Next, I'm going to just dust off that uh, little bit of moss and take my hot glue and put some in the center and take it around the edges and then set that little nest with the moss uh, back on that. Pressing the moss down into the glue, making sure that you have uh, good adhesion and all those little loose little sprigs are tucked in. Then I'm going to grab the uh, moss, that, uh, that little pile that I put on my uh, desk, my table and just stick it in the center like she's working on building the nest and put that in there extra. I got this little bag of uh, multicolored green and tan eggs at Hobby Lobby. Um, I'm going to take those and position in three, uh, two large ones and a little small one. And once I have those the way I want to lay them, I'm going to glue those in together. After I get that done, I'm going to take my bowl, turn it up, and put some hot glue around the top edge, 
make sure to work kind of fast because uh, where it's going onto the glass it dries pretty quickly um, and then I'm just going to turn it kind of to the side and then turn that upside down uh, to make it uh, meet and then if you have any of those little moss sprigs just trim those up because we're going to put something over those anyhow you don't have to get it perfect uh, next we're going to take this jute wrap it around to get about the size that you'll need cut a little extra in case uh, it's going to be short next we're going to take that uh, jute find the center and uh, then hold that with your hand find the front what you're going to consider the front which uh, I chose to make it where the little egg is um, put a little bit of hot glue grab the center of the jute and working uh, in little sections so it don't dry too quick on you just take it put some hot glue and then wrap that around just to make a um, finishing edge on that Once you get to the back, just trim those little tails off that you have, put your last little dab of hot glue, and seal that in together. Next I took a little ball of moss. I'm going to shape it into my hand uh, so it's going to be like a little perch for the mama bird. Um, I made it into like a little ball and made a little indention in the top. I'm going to take that and just hot glue it there on the top. You can take some hairspray and spray over the moss and it holds it into place better um, if you want to do that so it doesn't uh, come loose and uh, go onto your uh, table. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off some of the excess here before I glue the bird on. Take this little tan bird. I thought she matched good with the little eggs underneath and looked pretty with the uh, sage green. So I'm going to take her, I'm going to take off that little clip on the bottom, position her where I want to set her. Put some glue on the bottom and sit her there on the moss like she's watching her little eggs. Since she's been busy making the nest, I thought it would be cute to take a little twig out of the moss. Uh, this was a little stiffer piece uh, that I found that was in the bag. So I'm going to take that, put it into uh, underneath her little beak, put a little hot glue on the edge, and tuck that underneath there like she's still working on her building. Next I'm going to make a bow uh, just real quick with my bow maker. I'm going to make a um, just a two loop bow on each side with the uh, polka dot ribbon. It's got the uh, different shades of green and a little bit of peach and coral in it. I thought this tied in uh, really nicely with this uh, design. So I'm just going to um, dovetail the ends, fluff it out a little bit, and then I uh, look through my stash and uh, got a uh, sage green little um, button. I'm going to stick that in the center just for a little pop of whimsy. After that dries, I'm just going to take some hot glue, put it on the back side of the bow, and position it underneath the plate, but uh, down underneath that first little notch so you can see it when it's sitting uh, for your display. Okay, here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. Um, you can change out the colors of the uh, birds, the plate, the ribbons, and make this your own unique creation. This will be perfect as a gift or also just to add to uh, any of your decor. Um, be perfect for the spring or summer. You could change this out with the seasons and uh, add leaves or berries or pine and uh, make this a year-round craft. Thanks for crafting along with me today. I hope you enjoyed these one-of-a-kind Mother's Day gift ideas. If you did, please like and subscribe so you won't miss out on the upcoming crafty content. Also, leave me a comment down below to say hi and let me know which one of today's DIYs was your favorite. Until next time, happy crafting and happy Mother's Day. I enjoyed our time together. Thanks for watching. I linked another video here for more crafting inspiration. Be sure to check it out. Have a great day.